what is miscarriage? Miscarriage actually is a vaginal bleeding. Any vaginal bleeding and or loss of a pregnancy before the fetal viability. Okay, so if a woman, a pregnant woman, has a vaginal bleeding or and less of pregnancy before the age of viability of the fetus which is uh, 24 in UK and 28 in some other Middle East countries this is what we call miscarriage by the way miscarriage used to be uh, or used to call uh, a portion but nowadays it is miscarriage okay before we start talking about miscarriage I want to talk about two things uh, miscarriage is subdivided into early and late miscarriages early is before 12 weeks uh, bleeding or uh, losing pre uh, the pregnancy uh, and late miscarriage is after 12 weeks uh, losing of uh, pregnancy okay before we start I want to start talking about some ultrasound features of pregnancy okay uh, starting with uh, what we call a crown rumple length crown rumple length okay if we have a crown rumble length less than seven and the gestational sac less than a 25 millimeters uh, by the way gestational sac uh, increases uh, 1.3 millimeter each day okay so if we have crown rumble length less than seven millimeters and gestational sac less than 25 millimeters with no fetal heart beat what to accept what is that this is an intrauterine a pregnancy okay of unknown viability why is it intrauterine pregnancy? It is uterine and intrauterine pregnancy because in ultrasound we saw a crown rump length and gestational sac. Okay, this is why it is intrauterine pregnancy. Uh, okay, why it is uh, intrauterine pregnancy of unknown viability? Why don't we know the viability of this fetus? Because we have no fetal heartbeat so intrauterine pregnancy of unknown viability so do you know what is a crown rumble length do you know what is gestational sac let me just help you with this mm, graph okay and okay and okay here in this ground we can see uh, uterus a is a gestational sac A is a gestational sac of the fetus B is the crown rumble length and C is the amniotic sac D is the is yolk sac okay so A is the gestational sac B is the crown rumble length uh, C is the amniotic sac and D is the yolk sac okay okay this is the first case intrauterine pregnancy of unknown viability okay etc if we, by ultrasound we see a gestational sac of more than 25 millimeters and a crown rumble length of more than 7 millimeters and again with no fetal heart beat so we are seeing a big baby, a big fetus with more than relatively big, uh, uh, with comparison uh, with uh, the first case. Okay, if we see a gestation sac of more than 25 millimeters and the crown rumble length of more than seven millimeters with no fetal heartbeat, then we can say that this is an empty sac, empty sac because if it was not empty there will be some fetal heartbeat so this is empty sac okay this is the second case what about the third case here if we see an empty uterus and no adnexal abnormalities so by ultrasound 
we were able to see an empty uterus and no adnexal abnormalities. So the pregnancy is neither is no in the uterus, neither in the uh, tubes or the ovaries or the tissues around the uterus. So this is a pregnancy of unknown location. Pregnancy of unknown location. So what if we see an empty uterus with adnexal masses with adnexal masses but no fluid okay empty uterus that indicates that we don't have a visible or viable pregnancy in the uterus but we have adnexal mass adnexal mass is an ectopic pregnancy ectopic pregnancy is it ruptured no why because we have no fluid if the ectopic pregnancy ruptures the uh, it will drain some fluid so if we see an empty uterus with a nixal mass this is an ectopic pregnancy with no fluid it is an ectopic pregnancy that is not ruptured if we have some fluid with the adnexal masses, then we have ectopic pregnancy that is ruptured. Okay, that is ruptured. So these things I just wanted to talk about before we start with miscarriage. Okay, so now we know some uh, concepts about the crown rumble length, uh, the gestational sac. Uh, the intrauterine pregnancy of unknown viability, the uh, empty sac, if we have no fetal heartbeat with more than 25 gestational sac and more than 7 millimeters crown rumble length, we know what is pregnancy of unknown location, ectopic pregnancy, and ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Okay, so in this lecture, I'm going to talk about many. Uh, things that uh, that are related to miscarriage first of all I'm going to talk about signs symptoms then about differential diagnosis and after that I will move to beta HCG a, hum a human choreogenic uh, choreogenic I'm sorry gonadotrophin and then I will move to the etiology of miscarriage what is the what are the most important things that cause miscarriage in the first trimester and in the second trimester after that we move to the types of miscarriage and the management accordingly okay let's start with the symptoms of miscarriage okay the symptoms of miscarriage is first of all amnuria okay miscarriage is a non is a pregnancy so we must have amnuria okay this is the first symptom the other symptom is pain pain and the third one is bleeding so if you remember uh, when we def defined miscarriage we said that it is a vaginal bleeding and all lost pregnancy before age of fetal viability okay so we have to have vaginal bleeding to say that it is a miscarriage. So pain, vaginal bleeding, and amnuria. Okay, let's move to the differential diagnosis. <coughs> what other things uh, can be in your list other than miscarriage? Miscarriage if you have <coughs> amnuria, sorry, amnuria, pain, and vaginal bleeding. First of all, miscarriage okay miscarriage is in the top of your differential diagnosis if you have amnuria pain and vaginal bleeding second ectopic pregnancy you can never exclude ectopic pregnancy by history okay you have always to suspect ectopic pregnancy to find it out if it was there okay if it's there so uh, first of all miscarriage Second, ectopic pregnancy comes with pain, vaginal bleeding, and amnuria. The third possibility is pregnancy of unknown location. 
Do you remember pregnancy of unknown location when we do ultrasound and we uh, don't find uh, an intrauterine pregnancy and we don't find either an adnexal masses so we call this case a, a pregnancy of unknown location okay cervical polyp is another differential diagnosis of amenorrhea pain and vaginal bleeding okay so about differential diagnosis now let us talk about beta hcg the human chorionic gonadotrophin okay the beta hcg in normal pregnancy double every 48 hours okay up to eight weeks the beta hcg normally double okay if less than 60 66 uh, percent in uh, 42 uh, 48 hours 48 hours then we have to suspect ectopic pregnancy and miscarriage so in ectopic pregnancy and miscarriage the uh, beta hcg will increase uh, less than uh, the double okay it will increase less than 66 percent actually okay but this is not uh, for sure this is uh, not the case in all cases okay sometimes we have an ectopic pregnancy with normal increasement of beta hcg and sometimes we have a normal pregnancy with less than 66 percent uh, increasement of beta hcg in 48 hours okay so this is not diagnostic but it it is an indicator of ectopic pregnancy and miscarriage. You have to suspect ectopic pregnancy and miscarriage if we have less than 66 percent increasement of beta HCG. Okay, I want to move to what we call discriminate, 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 discriminatory <laughs> zone. Okay, what does it mean? Uh, discriminatory zone actually means that zone. Of levels of beta HCG that on uh, above it we should see the uh, gestational sac or the pregnancy so if we have beta HCG more than 1000 or actually 1500 to 1800 then if we do if we do a transvaginal ultrasound, we should see the gestational sac or the pregnancy, okay? Intrauterine pregnancy. And above 5000 beta HCG, we should see it abdominally, okay? By abdominal ultrasound. So if we have beta HCG levels of more than 100. Uh, 1500 to 1800 we should suspect transvaginal uh, ultrasound to see uh, a new intrauterine pregnancy if there were no intrauterine pregnancy then something is wrong okay this is what we call discriminatory zone zone okay <clears throat> let's now move to etiology of miscarriage what are the reasons behind this or these miscarriages okay actually the first and second trimesters uh, has different causes or, or risk factors behind the miscarriage in the first trimester the most important cause of miscarriages is a chromosomal abnormalities okay so in first trimester a chromosomal abnormalities is the first responsible factor in causing miscarriage okay uh, what chromosome abnormalities uh, do cause uh, miscarriage in the first trimester first of all trisomy then monosomy then triploidy okay so trisomy monosomy and triploidy other causes can uh, lead to a miscarriage in first trimester like uterine abnormalities of course uh, vaginosis and uh, infections and other causes 
but the most prominent and important one is the chromosomal abnormalities in the first trimester. What about second trimester? Second trimester, the most common or the most important causes of vagina of miscarriages is uterine abnormalities. Okay, uterine abnormalities. Then cervical weakness. If we have a weakness in the cervix, abnormality in the uh, uterine anatomy, then uh, this is a possible co cause of miscarriage in the second trimester. Infections, Listeria monocytogen, Rubella, Cytomegalovirus, is all co is, are all causes. Okay, multiple pregnancy, bacterial vaginosis, and also chromosomal abnormalities can rarely cause a second trimester miscarriage. Okay, but it still can cause causes. Uh, miscarriage in the second trimester so I want you to remember that in the first trimester chromosomal abnormalities is the most important and the most important among the chromosomal abnormalities is the trisomy okay in the second trimester the most important is uterine anomalies cervical weakness infection and other causes and don't forget that 25% of all miscarriages is of unknown etiology okay in 25% of cases, we can't find the cause behind the miscarriage, okay? This is about the etiology. Let's move to the types of miscarriages, okay? What are the types? The first one is threatened miscarriage. What is threatened miscarriage? It is any vaginal bleeding before 24 completed weeks. Any vaginal, any vaginal a bleeding before 24 weeks okay so in majority of the threatened miscarriage you will find a viable baby the uh, pregnancy will complete okay so you have to do a speculum examination to rule out other causes of bleeding like cervical laceration, cervical polyp and etc. Okay. What to do next is to follow up the patient because these patients with threatened miscarriages have an increasing uh, ratios of preterm labor. Okay. So it is a risk factor for a preterm labor. So we have to a closely follow up the patient and also we have to give a D anti D immunoglobulin okay so the first type of miscarriage is threatened miscarriage the second type is septic miscarriage from the name septic miscarriage is infected retained uh, products of conception okay so we have a product of conception the uterus that are infected so this is septic miscarriage what are the symptoms of septic miscarriage you can easily suspect the symptoms malaise malaise discharge vaginal discharge it is an infection and the infections are associated with vaginal discharge and fever okay so signs and symptoms of uh, of an infection okay what to do in septic miscarriage in septic miscarriage we have to admit the patient for IV antibiotic and then we have to do D and E procedure dilatation and evacuation okay so, threatened miscarriage, septic miscarriage, and the third type of miscarriage is the missed miscarriage. Missed miscarriage is the embryo that has dead or not developed normally. Okay, so if we have an embryo that has dead or not developed imper uh, normally, with no, uh, with no, with no even uh, bleeding. Okay, so we have missed miscarriage. So if we uh, have done uh, a crown rumble length uh, or ultrasound 
and crown rumble length was more than seven more than seven and we have no no fetal heartbeat then this is a missed miscarriage this is an empty sac with a dead embryo okay this is the third type of miscarriages the fourth type is incomplete miscarriage from the name the not all the product of conception passes okay so some of product of conception passes from the vagina and the remains of uh, product of conceptions or the fetus and the other things that supply it will stay in the uterus so this is incomplete incomplete miscarriage and actually it is a, a common type of miscarriages okay complete miscarriages is the passage of all products of conceptions from the vagina okay all products of conception passes from the vagina and this is complete miscarriage how to diagnose complete miscarriage when we have uh, when the bleeding stop okay no uh, bleeding anymore no bleeding anymore and we have negative pregnancy symptoms the pregnancy symptoms disappear then we can say that we have a complete miscarriage okay now an important type of miscarriages is a recurrent miscarriage what do we mean by recurrent miscarriage recurrent miscarriage is more than three consecutive miscarriages of a pregnancy of less than 24 weeks okay more than three miscarriages consecutive one after another okay okay so this is recurrent Miss carriage how to investigate recurrent miscarriage if a woman with a recurrent more than three consecutive uh, miscarriages came to come to you and ask you to investigate her case you have to do karyotyping because uh, she may uh, has a uh, some chromosomal abnormalities you have to, to do pelvic ultrasound to exclude uterine anomalies or some anatomical dysfunctions uh, down there and one of the most important causes of frequent miscarriages is antiphospholipid syndrome antiphospholipid syndrome and hemophilia actually and anticoagulation is other causes important causes of miscarriages so let's remember the cause of frequent miscarriages uh, the causes that or the theology of the miscarriage that we have mentioned uh, previously a plus antiphospholipid syndrome and hemophilia and hemophilia okay now how to manage a miscarriage we have three choices okay three methods of management of miscarriage expectant the first one the second one is medical theory and the third one is surgery what is expectant expectant is to wait and see okay because nine percent of all uh, miscarriages will complete or will complete the miscarry within a three months okay a three months so you have to uh, wait and see and during waiting you have to motivate the patient motivate motivate and you have to uh, prepare the patient to what is coming and you have to tell her what to expect okay so what are the complications of expectant therapy infection because we have retained a product of conception in the uterus and these retained pieces will always be under the risk of infection three percent uh, is actually the percent of infections with expectant therapy hemorrhage 
is the other complication hemo h okay uh, also three percent risk is the first way of treatment expectant the second way is medical treatment by uterotonic agents like mesoprostol that facilitate facilitate uterine contractions and evacuation actually mesoprostol mesoprostol uterotonic agent mesoprostol uh, has some contraindications a patient with asthma should not take mesoprostol patient with mitral uh, valve stenosis patient with hypertension should not take mesoprostol okay uh, patient with anticoagulation anticoagulation okay so after giving mesoprostol we have to do uh, ultrasound after two to three weeks to confirm that we have uh, fully evacuated uh, the uterus okay so efficacy of the usement of medical treatment is about 92 to 94 percent okay 92 of 94 percent of people that takes uh, mesoprostol will end up with uh, losing uh, or complete miscarriage uh, f f within 10 weeks okay 10 weeks so it is a very successful method of treatment the third and final method of treatment is to do a surgery okay surgery is the third method what surgery is, is to be done vacuum aspiration so we use vacuum to aspire the baby E and C uh, oh, I'm sorry D and E dilation and evacuation and finally D and C dilation and curettage in some cases this is all I want to talk to you about miscarriage I just want to make a, a, a review fast review okay so we talked about the signs and symptoms amnuria pain and uh, amnuria pain and vaginal bleeding differential diagnosis miscarriage ectopic pregnancy cervical polyp and uh, other causes and beta hcg uh, doubling within uh, 48 hours uh, if less than 66 percent then we have ectopic and uh, we have uh, miscarriage one of them okay the etiology behind the miscarriage the first trimester chromosomal a trisomy monosomy triplody and the second trimester uterine abnormalities infection cytomegalovirus uh, listeria monocytogen and uh, we have uh, bacterial vaginosis and other causes uh, types of miscarriage uh, the uh, threatened miscarriage the missed miscarriage the incomplete the complete and the uh, recurrent uh, miscarriage and finally we end up by the management of miscarriage the uh, expectant management the medical and uh, the surgical management uh, sorry for any mistakes uh, sorry for uh, not being uh, that fluent in some sentences uh, Hope you hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much.